These are the two U.S. states. One is Colorado and one is Wyoming. But which one is which? And this is one of the Dakotas. Either it's a north or a south. You see, some of the U.S. states are very confusing, at least when it comes to their shapes. When all of the U.S. states are put together in a single map, it's easily distinguishable what states they are. But when shown in isolation, it becomes more of a guessing game. And all of this confusion starts with exceptionally similar square and rectangular shapes of many U.S. states, which is a prominent feature across Western Central and Central United States. When we compare the political map of the contiguous United States with other countries like China and India, it's comprehensible that every state or province in these countries have a unique shape to them. So why did the U.S. Congress did such a sloppy job to form some of the states by just drawing straight lines, which even a five-year-old can do? Or did they? You see, cutting a straight line through a piece of land is a straightforward method to form a state. But it's not always the case given the political, social, and geographical challenges a piece of land presents during the division process. Every country has multiple natural features like rivers, mountains, and coastlines that work really well in forming natural borders. This is a map representing various U.S. rivers and waterways that share a common border naturally formed by different rivers. For example, the Mississippi River forms a natural border between Arkansas, Tennessee, Mississippi, and Louisiana. Similarly, the Appalachian Mountains form a natural border between Tennessee and North Carolina. But if you take a look at the central and midwestern states, the divisions are pretty straightforward. A lot of these lines going horizontally across the country and a lot more going vertically give some of these states their distinct boxy shapes. In fact, some of the states like Colorado and Wyoming are so identical that it's almost impossible to tell which one is which when presented in isolation. And these boxy shapes were the result of Public Land Survey System, or PLSS, implemented by the United States during the 19th century. This map of the Bureau of Land Management from a 1988 survey clearly depicts the principal meridians and baselines used for surveying states in the Public Land Survey System. This method in the U.S. is used to plan or divide real property, in this case land, for the purpose of selling and settling. And the methods used to survey a land and designate borders is relatively easy to understand. First of all, a land is divided into townships and ranges. A township is a square-shaped area measuring 6 miles on each side, totaling 36 square miles, and a range is a column of township extending north and south. Each township is identified by its township number, which represents its position north or south of a designated baseline, and its range number, which represents its position east or west of a designated principal meridian. Once the townships are established, within each township, the land is further divided into smaller units called sections. A section is a square-shaped area measuring one mile on each side and covering an area of one square mile or 640 acres. These sections can be further divided into smaller subdivisions to facilitate land ownership and conveyance. Common subdivisions within a section include quarter sections, which divide a section into four equal parts of 160 acres each, and quarter quarter section, which divides a quarter section into four equal parts of 40 acres each. So when all of these small bits and pieces of square-shaped land add up, it forms this huge mass of land, basically creating the boxy state. And the PLSS is a very efficient system as it provides a consistent and uniform framework for identifying and describing land parcels, making it easier to determine land ownership and boundaries. It also allows for efficient land registration, property taxation, and land conveyance, as each parcel can be uniquely identified within the PLSS grid. However, if we compare some of these states with the states on the East Coast, they somehow lack this distinct boxy feature. It's because the United States was established from east to west. The early Europeans who came to the land of America settled on the east coast and eventually formed the original 13 colonies during the 17th and 18th century. However, during the time, there was no standardized land designation system like PLSS, and most of the disputed lands were sold and purchased under a treaty or conquered with political and military power. 
For example, the border between Pennsylvania and Maryland was the subject of a protracted dispute and was eventually resolved through the Mason-Dixon line, resulting in a more defined and rectangular shape for both states. And during the time land designation was based on grants and charters, the English monarchy issued land grants and charters to individuals and companies, resulting in irregular shapes for some colonies. For instance, Pennsylvania's rectangular shape can be attributed to the land grant to William Penn, while Delaware's small size and irregular shape are a consequence of a land grant to the Duke of York. Furthermore, the coastal states have a natural irregularity to their coastal borders because of the very shape of the eastern coast of the United States. Then in 1765 came the American Revolution. Between 1775 and 1783, the Americans fought the British and overthrew the British crown, gaining independence and establishing the United States by converting the original 13 British colonies into independent states. And right after the independence, the PLSS was established in 1785. After the Declaration of Independence, the United States as an independent country for the next century went on a shopping spree acquiring new pieces of land through westward expansion. Then in 1803, the U.S. marred a history by purchasing the biggest piece of land from France for $15 million, famously known as the Louisiana Purchase. This new land acquisition invested the Mississippi River, even to this day, as the biggest ever real estate deal in history. The Louisiana Purchase almost doubled the size of the United States and expanded the country's borders up to the Rocky Mountains. Over the decades, the U.S. acquired Florida, Mexican territories that included present-day California, Nevada, Utah, Arizona, New Mexico, and parts of Colorado and Wyoming. The sudden acquisition of such a huge piece of land put forth a very practical challenge for the U.S. Congress. Solving disputes within and adjacent territories like the Orleans Territory and creating new demarcations and borders. Over the course of several decades, PLSS came to the rescue, informing independent states like Missouri, Arkansas, Iowa, Minnesota, etc. However, many of the present-day states were not created individually. For example, Nevada, Utah, and parts of Colorado and Wyoming were part of the Utah Territory, and over the course of several years, Utah was chopped up into present-day individual states. And because most of the land was vastly empty and had limited land ownership, it then faced major challenges related to cutting and chopping land into thin strips and irregular shapes. Also, most of the central U.S. had relatively flat land. The Congress took the easiest path to divide the territories, to form states by drawing straight lines and boxes, to form townships and ranges, eventually creating the boxy shapes that we see today. This is Stories Across, and thank you for watching.